hello class again and welcome to this particular video and in here we're going to look at point of intersect and this is actually important because not only we're dealing with one line equation but what if you're giving two line equations like for example looking at graph a graph b and graph c you see two different lines on each graphs you see line one which is purple and line two which is green and we see some interesting commonalities in each of those graphs and some interesting differences first what i want you to do is survey look at this question and tell me what is common between line one and line two in terms of the slope and the intercept on a b and c once you put down your conclusion on what the slope and the y intercept relationship are then you can be able to come up with some interesting conclusions as to relationships that are possible or solutions that are possible in graph a graph b and graph c looking at the two lines so looking at graph a first what we notice is that first we see that the direction of the two lines which is line one and line two are actually the same which means that they are pointing in the same direction and this particular leads to particular fact leads to the conclusion that they are actually parallel but now are they actually distinct or are they overlapping each other what you notice is that if i pick this line one or the other let's say i pick line um i get this one here line two and i move it just up and down without changing the direction this actually shows or tells me that the direction is still the same in rest with respect to line one but the problem is that they don't overlap which means that the thing that you actually have to consider is that the direction is the same but looking at the intercept on the y-axis it is different so for the green line the y-intercept is actually represented as b2 because that is from line 2 however looking at line 1 the y-intercept is actually here which is b1 so therefore in here we can come up with a conclusion that indeed this particular graph a shows that the line one slope is actually the same or equal to the line two slope which is m which is represented as green change the color to green however looking at the y intercept of line two it is not equal to the y intercept of line one so this will represent as b1 and for the line two this one will represent as b2 so that is it for graph a now moving on to graph b graph b actually comes from graph a what if you move line one to line two or vice versa if i move line two to overlap line one so imagine in graph a i move this to this particular location here which is line one this means here that i would produce graph b which means that they both share the same y-intercept as you notice here so if i change the color here to determine the y-intercept of line one it is actually right here which is represented as b1 and what we notice for the line two which is represented as green is that it is the same thing as that of line one so therefore they both share the same slope which is represented as m so in here m1 is indeed equal to m2 and the y-intercept b2 is equal to b1 
which is for graph B. And finally, for graph C, what if we change the direction of one of the lines? So in this case, if I change the direction of this particular line one, it means that I'm actually either going up or down or I change the direction slightly but not to the point where the slope is actually equal to the slope of line 2. So as long as I'm changing the direction which is pretty much the slope and or I'm moving the y-intercept, I'm actually having a constant change in the point of intersection which means here that there is one point of intersection that is noticed in the relationship between these two lines so therefore this here shows me that the slope has to be different so if I write that here we notice from observation that M1 slope is not equal to the M2 which is line 2 slope and something here is quite ambiguous in a way concerning the y-intercept so what we see for the y-intercept is this is actually true when you actually have the y-intercept to not be equal so if you look at line 1's y-intercept it is actually represented as b1 and if you look at the line 2 y-intercept it is right here which is represented as b2 so in this particular case we see here that b1 i'll write it here b2 y intercept is not equal to b1 however what can i do to have the y intercept to be equal but the magnitude to be different so what I can do to line 1 or line 2 is to move it. I can move this line all the way up to the point where it intersects the same at the same point as line 2. So if you notice here, this is another case where our y-intercept is actually equal for both lines. So in this case, we can actually determine or conclude that in case 3 we can actually have a case where the y-intercepts are equal to each other while making the slope to be different so in this case what are we going to come to a conclusion in terms of our points for graph A which is represented as this we actually see that there is no point of intersect intersect that is for graph A now looking at graph B we actually notice that there are many solutions that is not I that is N many solutions which means here that there are many points of intersect which are shared by both lines in here and then finally looking at the last part here which is graph C we have actually come to a conclusion that there is only one point of intersect which is shown here which is represented as P where we're going to find the X and the Y coordinates so here there is one point of inter which is right there so once we're able to come to this particular conclusion between a b and c we're going to focus on cases or how to determine this particular intercept or determining one of these three possibilities and this actually comes from two strategies to actually keep in mind one strategy used to determine the point of intercept set when given two equations because you're dealing with two lines 
is one graphing so in this video we're going to look at graphing and by giving two equations you'll always be giving two equations you'll be able to determine whether that or those lines actually intersect at a point or they have many solutions or they have no point of intersect and the second method is systems of linear equations which means say that you're going to perform some problem solving skills and strategies either through elimination or substitution in order for you to actually determine what the coordinates of that particular point is where is the x and y that makes those two lines to actually be equal and that is actually applicable to all kinds of word problem questions involving either business trade or comparing two properties or equations that shows different relations and then seeing where or when there is a particular commonality when do they share different values so that is what you're going to be applying those skills into dealing with this type of problems so in here focusing on graphing we're going to look at this particular question which says to determine the point of intersect and in here we're given two lines this is represented as line one and this here i'm going to represent as green it is represented as line two and given these two lines what is the point of intersect if there is any so let's solve first now let's level our l1 this is l2 which is represented as this line y is equal to negative 2 over 3x minus 4 and looking at line 1 we actually have the equation to be equal to y is equal to negative 3x plus 3 so now judging from our previous concept concerning relationship between two lines we notice that we have to compare not only the slope which is represented as m but also the y-intercept so first off you always think about the slope what is the slope on line one this here line one tells me that the slope which is represented as m1 is equal to negative 3 if you can see clearly you can actually level these in terms of y equals m x plus b to see clearly and the same thing is applicable for line 2 y equals m x plus b so this can actually reveal the slope to you easily so for line 2 the slope which is m2 is noticed to be a fraction negative 2 over 3 so therefore this actually tells me that the slope are not the same if the slope are not the same it means here that m1 which is represented as negative 3 is not equal to m2 so if we go back to our three possibilities we notice that out of these three possibilities only one has slope that is not equal which is actually right here so therefore this actually leads to the conclusion that i'm going to have only one point of intersect and that actually is applicable to this particular question so this question says that there is only one point of intersect so since we have just one point of intersect then you have to solve what is the point of intersect between these two lines so what we have to do is look at line one and label the slope and the y-intercept and apply that same logic to line 2 and then graph it so in here line 2 is equal to negative 2 over 3x minus 4 so in here m2 is actually equal to negative 2 over 3 and we know that the b2 in that question for line 2 is equal to negative 4 
and if you look at line one the slope is equal to negative three and in here the y intercept is equal to positive three so looking at this y intercept first the line one y intercept on the graph is positive three so in here we're going to count on the graph one two three which is right here so here is positive three and for line two we notice or first let's graph line one so once we have the slope sorry the y intercept for line one then we have to determine the direction that leads to another point on that particular graph so in here we notice that the direction if we change this slope to fraction it is negative three over one which means that i am going three down one step to the right so in here i'm going to go three steps down and one to the right which means my next point is right here so all i need is two points i will find the two points therefore i'm going to draw that particular line and to draw the line that means i have to connect the two points in here so if i change this by picking the shape i'm going to draw my line and there we have it right there i have to readjust this line so that they meet properly because i've tried this so many times and it tends not to set up properly so this now should be perfect now there we go awesome and that is it for line one so we determine the line one and what we have to do is to determine the line for line two so in here we know that the y intercept for line two is equal to negative four so i'm going to start zero one two three negative four which is right here so we have negative four which is my first point when x is zero y is negative four and the next point is based off of this specific direction which here means that i'm going to go two steps down and one three steps to the right so in here i'm going to apply the logic here i'm going to start at this point from negative four i'm going to go two steps down which brings me down to negative six and then i'm going to move three steps to the right which go, takes me to this particular location right here so in here is my next point and what that means is that i'm going to draw the line that connects the two points one at the y intercept and the other at the direction that leads me to that particular point so in here is the graph or the line that is related or with relation to line two so if we readjust this properly we should actually be able to find our line two so this is perfect so here yeah, therefore what we've actually determined is the line two's line which is represented as this equation negative two over three x minus four and our line one which is represented right here to be equal to y is equal to negative three x positive three so once we have that then we can actually find where the two lines meet because we know that there is only one point of intersect we need to determine what that particular point or the coordinates of that particular point so what we see here is that line one and line two meet at this particular location right here which is awesome and now we need to find the answer to the question so the answer to this particular question is p which is point of intersect to be when x is negative no when x here is 3 y is negative 6 so that is my answer
to this particular question. So in here, what you'll be able to do is first look at the slope, see whether the slopes are equal or not. If they're not equal, that leads to the conclusion that there is always one point of intersect. And from there, you're going to plot the graph of both lines by using not only the y-intercept, but also combining the directions which is using the slope for each line and then you're going to extend your two lines to where they actually meet which is the point of intersect which we determine to be p so that is about it for this strategy in here and you can apply this to any other questions i give you i challenge you all to do b and c and what you notice in b here is you need to transform this to y equals mx plus b so we need to find or transform this equation into y equals mx plus b and do the same thing as well to this particular equation right here and once you're able to do that then you can compare those slopes of m1 and m2 are they equal or are they not equal so if you actually solve this particular question we should come up with something quite interesting in here concerning the solution and what we see here is that not only is the slope equal to each other but also what we notice comparing the y-intercept is that they are also equal which is really awesome and once we look at this particular condition by comparing if we go back up and think about which one of the three applies to this particular question? We see here that B question is actually applicable to graph B. Oh, what a coincidence, which means here that our conclusion is that we're going to have many solutions for question B. So in here, we're going to have our conclusion to be many solutions, which means here that if you draw your graph in this particular question we're going to arrive at a particular conclusion that looks like this where this is line one line two we're going to change it to a different color will be right here as well so they will both overlap at a particular point right there so this is actually awesome and really cool to actually check out Sorry, this is not really um, looking really appropriate or exact, but still, you get the logic in here. So in here, this is our line two, and the orange is the line one. So in here, we've come to the conclusion that there are many solutions, which means that these two lines, they share the same points on that particular graph. So that's it for B and the conclusion for B is that yes, there are many solutions after you draw the graph. So what I want you to do is to tell me what M1 and M2 is and what B1 and B2 are in this particular question in here. And for C, 3x minus 5 and this is equal to y and this here tells me that y intercept is positive 2 and our slope here is negative 4 and this actually will tell us that exactly the slopes are different and the y intercepts are different therefore this has one point of intersect and if you draw your graph you should be able to find your point to be 1 and negative 2 by performing the same strategy we did in question 1a which is right there so that is it but the only difference in this particular question is that you're not dealing with fractions you're dealing with just whole numbers so it's pretty easy to actually solve that particular question and then finally it's applying that skills to question b question b tells us that we have two lines in here we have line one here and we have line 2 which is what we have right here and we want to see whether this point is actually the point of intersect in these two 
between these two lines so what that means is that if I have line 1 which is if for example looking at this question we see that line 1 has a negative slope so it is somehow like this and then if you look at line 2 we actually by inspecting you can actually conclude that it will have a positive slope and it will be in this particular direction so in here we're asked whether these two points share or these two lines actually share a point that is p where x is 5 y is 2 which means that not only does line 1 have the point where well, this is line 1 have the point 5 and negative 2 but also line 2 line 2 must also have 5 and negative 2 which means here that if I put both x and y into each equation I should get the left side to be equal to the right side or if I put x in both equations I should get my y's to be equal to negative 2 so in here we're going to perform the first strategy which means that I will have to put 5 and negative 2 which is x and y in line 1 and line 2 so in here in line 1 we know that the equation is equal to 8y is equal to negative 2x negative 6 so when x is in this case 5 and y is negative 2 we're going to solve the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation independently you don't want to move anything over we want to see whether the left side is equal to the right side so 8 times negative 2 gives us negative 16 and let's look at the right side and hopefully we get negative 16 what we see here negative 2 times 5 gives us negative 10 minus 6 and if we solve the right side negative 10 minus 6 gives us negative 16 which is equal to the left side so left side is equal to right side which tells me that for line 1 yes this point exists on line 1 so now the next question that you want to ask yourself is does line 2 actually have that same point on its line so looking at line 2 we have the equation to be equal to 8x minus 3y is equal to minus 11 so now since the right side is a number we hope that the left side will give us negative 11 so if we put x to be equal to 5 and we put our y we'll put the bracket around the 5 and our y here to be equal to minus 2 let's see whether this will be equal to minus 11 so on the left side we have 5 minus negative 3 times we can say negative 2 will give us positive 6 and this is equal to negative 11 on the right side so therefore the left side if we solve it we see here that 5 plus 6 gives us 11 unfortunately is not equal to negative 11 so therefore no 5 to negative 2 doesn't exist on line 2 so in conclusion it means that the point of intercept between line 1 and line 2 is not 5 and negative 2 
is not at that particular location right there so in this particular case in order for we to have the lines to intersect at a particular point we must actually have both equations here to give us left side to be equal to right side but in here when line one was solved we have this condition to be true which is awesome however this one here left side is not equal to the right side so therefore this is not actually true for that whole solution so in this particular case that is how you're able to determine whether a point is actually the point of intersect comparing or putting two lines together so that's about it for this particular long video i want you guys to be able to look through all the various questions that i'm going to post to your workspace and please make sure you do those and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me by that way we can actually talk about how we can help you succeed through this particular stage of this particular lesson so all the same see you on the next video where we're going to talk about systems of equations which is the other way by which you can actually determine the point of intersect and avoid this long process by doing graphing so thanks for following me through this really appreciate it see you next time and stay smart and believe in yourselves